that's cool too. So uh, we're back in the swing of things this week, guys, back to normal with all of our calls. And um, today's call, I'm actually really excited about. So about two weeks ago, we did a campaign for Holly. We did a live campaign build on this call, on this training call. Uh, so this is our weekly Monday training call, guys. And we have FATC, Ad Hacks Premium, and Academy and Masterminders on this call. Um, and Holly was uh, working with a high ticket coach and we sort of discussed the rapid fire testing method a little bit. Now, this is a method that we developed inside of 8Loop Social. It's not patent pending. I'm sure lots of other people kind of do this approach as well. We just gave it a fancy name. And it's an approach that we use because we work with a lot of coaches and on people selling online courses. So infopreneurs, I think is what you would call them. However, what I will say to that is, uh, while it is extremely effective for coaches and infopreneurs, it actually works really well with e-commerce as well. So we actually use rapid fire testing as well uh, for e-commerce clients. And we do it for, I guess, testing out personas. So I know someone on in FATC today was mentioned personas and um, uh, getting personas right and the messaging behind that can sometimes make the difference between a killer campaign or one that just never ever hits the ground running. So today's training call, I'm gonna be taking you through in a lot more depth this rapid fire testing method. In fact, what I'm gonna do is we're actually gonna build an entire rapid fire testing campaign. And I'm gonna use the Academy as sort of the guinea pig here um, to show you how this would apply. So for those of you who have never heard me use the term or you really don't even know what I'm talking about right now, um, rapid fire testing is essentially where you are trying to validate either the messaging or an offer or an audience before so you're almost trying to validate a funnel concept before you go and build the funnel for it um, and why is this important or why is this a good strategy especially if you're working with coaches and online info uh, course infopreneurs or all of that is that a lot of them what you will find and perhaps some of you guys have even been in this position where you have tried to build a course or you have tried to roll something out online and you spent months and months and months building this beast of a thing um, and in fact a lot of them actually start backwards they'll build the actual course first <laughs> and then they build the funnel and then they go and sell it and they realize oh shit it's totally wrong um, so they'll spend months and months building this and I did this mistake too and then realize it's not the right lead magnet. It's not the right offer. It's not the right messaging. It's not the right training to support the messaging that needs to happen. So rapid fire testing is a really good way to essentially validate concepts, validate lead magnets, validate funnels before those funnels get built, before any of the lead magnets get built. And also to identify the lucrative audiences, so the, where the opportunities lie. And we use this for pretty much every single client we have. And it is so effective that we've been able to come on board a lot of the times picking up uh, clients from that had worked with previous agencies where the agencies had never been able to get them uh, registrations or anything like that for their webinars and using rapid fire method going from that to all of a sudden being able to get them you know 50 70 webinar registrations a day so it, it is an extremely effective strategy so I'm going to take you through that today if you're rolling out your own stuff it's great for you, especially if you're working with clients in the coaching or infopreneur space. Anyone here specializing in that niche, by the way? Guys, no? Okay, cool. So I'm going to do <coughs> a screen share. <coughs> of course, I get a frog in my throat as soon as the exciting bit starts. Okay. Okay, cool. Let me pull up the chat box. 
Okay, cool. All right, so this is um, a really super fancy, high-tech piece of paper here. <laughs> it's essentially a table where we're gonna map out our personas. And this is super important for, um, I feel like I'm repeating this a lot. Uh, this is not a call just for coaches or people working with coaches. But this, this specific vertical is notorious for doing this where they, they, they will come to you and go, hey, I help people be happy or I help people make money through their business. Well, who do you help? I help everyone. I can help anyone. I can help accountants and da, 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 da. Um, and of course, in marketing with funnels, that typically doesn't, it's not going to work very well. You're not going to do very well. You're not going to make very many sales if you try to go too broad like that. So the first thing that, that needs to happen when you do a rapid fire test is you absolutely need to map out your personas and the core values or the messaging that goes behind that. We also have a tab here for targeting and that's just ease of use. I'm gonna show you an example of how I would put together, how I would do targeting, uh, but I'm not gonna go too much into the targeting because that's obviously a whole nother uh, training and hopefully you guys understand how to do targeting. So what we want to do first of all is we want to identify the personas that your audience can possibly service. So I'm going to start off with a couple examples here because I don't want you to just get caught up and boxed into academy personas and, and thinking, oh, well, this wouldn't apply. So I want to start with an example of uh, an e-commerce client that we uh, I work with. So she um, she helps she has a very successful Shopify store. It does, uh, does a few million, so it's, it's very successful. And she helps Shopify store owners generate sales and revenue. So she has a training program. It's an online course. It's a, I think it's priced at 1200 or something like that. It's low t what you would consider low ticket online course. Okay. So she helps people grow Shopify stores and make money. Now, when you think about that, you're great, great, okay, we're targeting Shopify store owners, or are we? Who are the people that actually want to create Shopify store owners or that would be interested in her service offering, right? And when you start to think about it like that, you can break down the personas. Well, there's actually brand new Shopify store owners, so people that are just getting started out. And then there's those that are existing Shopify store owners. Why is it important to separate those two? Well, think about it like this. What is the pain point of an existing Shopify store owner? Probably scaling, right? Or probably his Facebook ads. Having problems with uh, getting a good CPA through Facebook advertising. Whereas a brand new Shopify store owner isn't even there yet. They're trying to figure out how do I even like get manufacturers or how do I even set up a Shopify thing? How do I even set up a Facebook ad? So the messaging is fundamentally different between these two people and their needs and wants are extremely different. And again, you can add in um, she also identified influencers. So influencers are people that she was working with. They have big audiences. They've spent a lot of time and effort building and they want to sell t-shirts or they want to sell gear, but they have no idea what they're doing, right? They, they don't even know. Again, the messaging for those is so different. Biz ops. We've got biz ops in this one as well. So people that are just looking for an opportunity, they want to make side income, they want to quit their job, they don't know if they want to go into affiliate marketing or MLM or should I start a Shopify store, they're kind of trying to make that decision. Again, the messaging for those guys is going to be very, very different as well. It's going to be more around, hey, do you want to leave your job and are you looking for an opportunity? Here are the opportunities happening in the e-commerce space, et cetera, et cetera. So when you start to break down personas that make up an audience, you can get super specific with your messaging. And that's really, really important because direct response is as about being, effective direct response is about being as specific as you can. And ideally, that means monetary or specific time frames or specific quantify and not quantifiable numbers, which I'll talk to you about under the messaging section, okay? So that was one example, guys. We uh, did another one for 
We just did another one recently for an e-commerce client that we're about to go into a fire test. And uh, again, they sell um, high quality wooden sunglasses. And so their personas are, you know, men, usually men age 25 to uh, fifth, 45 or something like that. And they're pretty successful in life because the glasses cost a little bit of money. Yes. They, um, military persona in there. So they're veterans that are actually uh, buying a story. The company, he used to be in Afghanistan. There's a luxury aspirational buyer. So guys that are like, they just, it's the look. They want that look. They have an appearance that they want to keep up. That's what's important to them. That's very different to the veteran messaging, right? And then you've got um, another persona. So the adventurous, the, the eco person, the one that cares about the planet. So uh, I'm just saying this to give you guys ideas and to help you realize that most of your clients, pretty much every single one of them, unless they have already clearly niched down, uh, are probably too broad or going very, very broad. And what you want to do is you want to identify the audiences that are going to be most lucrative with um, the hooks or the funnels that you should build or start off with that. Now, that doesn't mean, for example, you'll see here, this is an academy persona breakdown that I quickly put together. That doesn't mean that I can only target agency owners. As you guys know, that's not what I do, right? So uh, what it means is that I should probably have a separate funnel for agency owners. And then once I get that one up and going and it's doing really well, then I should focus on Facebook freelancers or whichever one proved the second most lucrative in my or viable in my rapid fire testing method. So the rapid fire test is there to help me identify which one of these personas or funnels do I need to build out first, get that up and going. And then once it's churning, uh, then I can actually build out more and more. That's not a problem. It's not, it's not hard to do, but uh, this is extremely effective. Okay. So this is an Academy one. We've got biz op, Facebook freelancers, Digital marketers, uh, for those of you who don't know the Academy, the Academy is uh, an intensive program where my team and I help uh, essentially Facebook freelancers and agency owners land Facebook marketing clients, so Facebook ad clients, and build up their teams and scale their revenues. So as part of that, the personas that come to us through our funnels are biz ops. So we do get a few people that are just like, hey, I don't know, maybe I'm going to start a Shopify store. I might get into this Facebook thing. It seems like, you know, there's a lot of money in this Facebook thing. They're really not our primary target audience. However, I could be wrong with that, right? I could run a rapid fire test and it could prove really successful. We've got Facebook freelancers. So these guys are already working with clients. Um, they're burning out. They're not able to take holidays. They can't scale past. Usually it's the 10K mark and they don't know how to build the team. You've got digital marketers, so AdWord guys, SEO guys, guys that are uh, web devs in different spaces in the industry, and they're starting to get asked by their clients or they're realizing, holy crap, there's a lot of money in Facebook. Uh, I need a piece of this pie while it's hot like this. And then you've got agency owners, um, and then we've also added broad in there. So we usually, in our rapid fire test, will also have a broad uh, test uh, audience in there to see, uh, kind of uh, compare it com next to the personas. So this means at the very bare minimum, I have five ad sets that are going to be set up in my rapid fire testing. Makes sense? Ideally, I would almost have 10 because what I would do with each one of these is I'm going to. I would test it out a lookalike and I would test it out with one interest targeting. And if I didn't have lookalikes, I would use two different interest targeting. Why? Why do you think, guys? Tell me why. Because, um, because otherwise you're hedging all your bets on one targeting that you've put together, right? And it could just be really shitty targeting that you've done. Um, and so you're thinking, oh, Facebook freelancers are no good. Well, no, they're really good. It's just your targeting was really shitty for that specific ad set that you had. So this is what's important to realize here is when you pitch rapid fire tests to clients or when you tell them you're going to do this, 
This is usually why we ask for $2,000 in the first month in testing as well, because you start to think about it, each one of those ad sets, you generally wanna dedicate $100 ad spend to, to test properly. There are 100% instances where right off the bat, it becomes extremely clear pretty fast which one of your messages or your audiences are, are killing it and you don't have to continue you know, spending the money. You can turn everything off because it's pretty clear. Uh, that happens about 50% of the time. So within two to three days, it's like, yeah, we, it's very, very obvious who the winner is here. Uh, but usually what you want to do in a rapid fire test for 50% of the other <laughs> tests that you run is you want to dedicate about $100. So enough data per ad set. So this means that if I am running two targeting options for each one of my personas, I'm spending $1,000, right? Minimum on this rapid fire test. And the test takes about a week. So it takes about five days. You run it for about five days. So it's about $20 a day that you're, you're spending. Okay, so um, I hope this is making sense. If you have questions, guys, just interrupt me, all right? All right, so I'm quickly gonna fill one or two of these out and I just wanna to explain to you how I would fill them out or how we would go through that and then I'm gonna take you into an ad account and we're gonna set up the rapid fire testing, okay? So BizOp, uh, core values, they wanna leave their job, uh, they want to be their own boss, uh, maybe their stay at home parent, uh, spend time with kids, that could almost be a separate persona, right? The stay-at-home mom um, or the stay-at-home mom or dad. Um, Want to be their own boss, stay at home. If you guys have ideas, let me know as well because I'm making these up on the fly right now. I should know this shit because it's my funnel. <laughs> but um, freedom, that's a good one. All right, so you're getting the, 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 the point here. What, do they don't, what don't they want? Um, they don't want to have to spend years uh, trying to become some kind of Facebook ninja to make it all work. Um, they don't want it to be overly complicated, probably. Um, and even here, so wants, needs, don't want. So wants, needs, don't want, or the things that they think they need to do, but that they actually don't have. And this is important because it'll be in your messaging, right? Okay, so messaging, um, here's where you will take specific results that, or hooks, we would call them client has helped clients achieve or that they themselves have achieved or things that they're offering so if we're talking about e-commerce for example uh, the hook could be um, so this is obviously not an e-commerce persona right here but I'm giving you an example the hook could be 15 day money back guarantee or it could be um, with the, the sunglass guys glasses that float on water or if we were targeting the military guys for example the um, the messaging, the messaging around that. So their core values for that persona was like camaraderie, durability, practicality, endurance, loyalty. Those are their core values. What do they want? They want to feel connected. They want to feel like they're part of something. They want to feel like they're supporting their community. They're supporting a veteran-owned company. So the messaging around that, the hooks around that, um, is all right well from Afghanistan to the Amazon this is a company owned by veterans that's what's gonna work for those guys right those are their core values the messaging is so different to the adventurist or um, another person so in this instance BizOp, what is the messaging that would work for them well uh, I could pull testimonials for some of the students that were similar to those individuals so that were in similar situations where they had no Facebook marketing background, they had no digital marketing background, and I could pull a specific result. So I could say um, how to um, build a Facebook uh, – uh, I'm going to go not how to, that's actually – 
Uh, so I'm going to use Michael as an example here. So he was homeless when he came to us, no marketing background whatsoever. Um, and within he moved to Florida to be with his parents. And within, I think the space of six months, Michael was doing about $20,000 a month. So how to build a 20 K a month business. And then I can look at what I've said here in terms of my core values without having to spend years uh, trying to become an expert or um, something else they might think without um, they don't have case studies or they don't have experience. So here under my messaging, it could be something like without needing case studies. Now, obviously guys, please make sure this is an integrity and this is actually shit your client did. Super important, right? People will find out if it's not true and it's just not the best thing to lie about it. But where I'm getting at with this is, yeah, without, without having to leave your nine to five. No, we want to fucking leave our nine to five for that. <laughs> no way. We want, we want to say goodbye to the nine to five. Um, so make sure it's something that they've actually done. So that's why when you work with coaches, like in the briefing documents, we, we send them, we ask them like, what are all the results that you've achieved for yourself? Tell us your story in as much specific detail as possible. Like we want to hear months, time frames, the actual revenue figures, what was behind that? Because especially with these types of funnels, online courses and coaches, specific, specific, like, quantifiable headlines or messaging is what works. Um, when you go really, really broad, like how to build uh, a successful business without case studies, it's just not as poignant. Um, okay, so you could start to build this out. Let's go and do another one really quickly. Let's do Facebook freelancers. So they, uh, their core values is they want to be known as the best or an expert, uh, want um, successful relationships with clients, long-term relationships with clients. Um, they struggle to stay on top of all the updates and running their business. Uh, have no clue uh, how to hire, who to hire, how or who they even need in their business. Um, I could go on and on with this one because this one's very relevant to me. <laughs> but okay, anyways, that's probably enough. And then again, under the messaging, um, I'll build this one out a little bit more than this one because this is really not a persona I'm too familiar with or that I even actively advertise to. Uh, so Facebook freelancers, again, I could take a case study or a testimonial that we have of a Facebook freelancer. I was a Facebook freelancer, so I could even use my own. Um, the one that we use at the moment is uh, how to scale your agency to 80K a month, running Facebook ads for clients. Uh, but I could also look at what, what I've written down here and I go something like um, uh, how to, um, okay, so uh, retain clients or how to reduce client churn rates. Facebook ad client, see, specific, this is important, Facebook ad client churn rates in your business so that you can scale past uh, 10K a month without having to lend any more um, leads or business, okay? Now you can see, this is like very different lead magnets, right? One of these is talking about how to scale an agency, and one of these is really talking about 
reducing churn rates. So the lead magnet on the back of this, the funnel on the back of this is fundamentally different. Can you see that guys? Uh, again, we can do another one. Any ideas? Um, want to be, uh, uh, become, position yourself, how to position yourself as an expert, as a Facebook ad expert, even if, so I would need to flesh this out a little bit here, but, um, uh, 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 so how, what is something specific? So for me, that took me about a year to position myself. So that's not really a good hook there. Um, but I, our students, like for sure, that's why our masterminders are part of the database that we have online is because after two months of intensive training with us, they're, they're freaking better than 90% of the marketers out there. Um, so you could say something like, like how to position yourself as a Facebook ad expert in 60 days or less, even if you're just getting started out. And again, that would be fundamentally different training, right? Or you could say something like how to land i think another one that we have is how to land or how to close 10k facebook ad clients um, even if you don't have case studies or suck at sales obviously this is kind of a misnomer because you kind of need to not suck at sales so you'll need to unsuck yourself at sales to land a 10k client <laughs> they don't just like come out of your farts that's for sure um so i hope this is making sense i hope you guys are not getting stuck in the fact that i'm using the academy here and it's like tripping you up or you're relating too much to the copy <laughs> I hope you're like objectively looking at this going, oh, okay. So you're basically breaking down their needs, wants, what they don't want, what they think they need to have, the core values. And then you're putting together messaging as specific as you can around those. And that messaging, each one of those will result in essentially a different funnel. It could be a different funnel. So instead of me saying, holy crap, I'm going to build a funnel and I'm going to be a coach and teach people how to scale their agencies to $80,000 a month running Facebook ad for clients. And then I spend the next two months building out this massive beast of a thing. I'm actually going to test out the messaging, test out the concepts first. And then from there, I'm going to be very clear on like, actually this audience responds really well on how to position themselves as a Facebook ad expert. That's what they want. That's what I need to freaking position my funnel as. Um, and all of this leads into the Academy. So each one of these, it's the same product on the back end. Like the, the Academy does all of this. It's the same thing but the funnel that leads them into that is very different. And so I'm going to be testing out five different personas and each one of those is going to have their own messages or their own messaging unique to their own needs, wants, and core values. And at the end of my rapid fire test, I'm going to be able to see, Oh, agency owners want to know how to scale over 80 K or they want to know how to land five K clients in a sales pitch. That's what they're interested in. That is what my rapid fire testing is showing me where the money is at. Let me go and build a funnel around this. I have my audience now. I have my, my that messaging. Now all I need to do is actually build the funnel to support that. So um, what if the product doesn't exist? Well, that's even better. Even better because then you can mold the product specifically to uh, your funnel, to, to what, what your audiences actually want. Keep in mind, guys, if you're doing this for yourself, uh, it's super important. You still want to make sure that whatever messaging you're using is an integrity, right? Like they actually did this or their clients actually did this. Don't just spin shit out of thin air. What if the client has a course? Or, well, yeah, that's fine. This is exactly this, Teresa. So the academy already exists. Um, you, you would do this. So we, we just took on another coach recently 
she's already got the entire course built out. Um, it's a sales training program and we did the full rapid fire testing method. She was one of the ones where she had worked with someone before a couple agencies didn't work. Um, did rapid fire testing. We were able to identify the specific messaging that was going to work with her. So now the landing pages were split testing around that messaging. We know the direction we need to go. We know what the lead magnets need to be. And the webinar or the lead magnets pitch the same program. It's the same program. So you still build the lead magnet up front. Then each, no, no, you, you're not, this is rapid fire testing. This is the only thing I'm building. And then I'm going to go in and build lead ads. So I'm going to go in right now and show you guys lead ads. I'm going to show you targeting really quickly. And then I'm going to go in and, and set up the rapid fire testing. There's no funnel. There's no lead magnets here. All we have is this amazing high tech document and a Facebook lead ad. So yes, yes. Some of you may have picked up. You will have collateral damage, right? You'll have like, 40, 50 people that opt in um, and it goes nowhere. So you have to be prepared for that and you have to explain that to your client as well, that there will be collateral damage. Pretty, pretty easy situation. Once you do have the lead magnet up or the funnel up and going, you just send them an email and go, hey, we're super sorry about that. There was an issue at the time. We just picked up on it. Here's the training or here's, you know, here's what you were after. So honestly, we've never, ever in all of our years running my uh, rapid fires. We've only had like one person message the page going, Hey, nothing came through. Uh, and we've never really had any issues with it at all. So, um, yeah. Uh, my client thinks she knows who's interested. Maybe she's right. Maybe she's not. I would tell her run a rapid fire test and let's see who is the most interested. Okay. So targeting, let's quickly go into an ad account. All right, so, um, so I'm gonna do the Facebook freelancers one. Now, in my case, I would have enough inf uh, data for a lookalike audience, so I would go and um, export either a customer list of Facebook freelancers or a custom audience of people that I know are freelancers and create a lookalike audience from that. So I would run a lookalike, 1% to begin with, and then I would also have, uh, because I'll be honest with you, lookalikes are not always the best. They're, um, they're based off seed audiences, right? And seed audiences change our dynamic a lot of the time and lookalikes can sometimes like this. So um, it's always good to split test them against interest targeting. And then I would go into my audience um, insights tab. Sorry, I was trying to find out where that was. And I would think of what is a competitor or what's a Facebook page that I know a lot of Facebook freelancers or what's a tool that I know Facebook freelancers are using. Uh, so for example, I could go in here and let's see, I don't know if these guys show up at Espresso. No, that would have been good. No. Okay. Let's use another one, uh, John Loomer. So John Loomer basically trains Facebook freelancers. He's a really freaking clever guy. Um, and his audience or people that are engaging with him or connected with him are typically freelancers. So let's go John Loomer. And then I'm going to click on page likes. Um, Jill is asking, should rapid fire testing be a part of a setup fee? Uh, it, it is, yes, it's part, it's actually part of the, on, like, it's just part of what you, we, we don't charge additional to it if that's what you're asking. So normally what we tell our clients is like the first month we'll ask them to commit $2,000 minimum spend unless it's an existing campaign and we're just coming on board and, um, picking up where they're leaving off at whatever ad spend. Um, and about a thousand dollars of that will go towards our rapid fire testing. And then that usually it takes you about a week to rapid fire test and almost a week to set all of that up. So usually within the sort of third week of beginning to work with the client, then you have the data, then you're going, okay, this is the funnel we're going to build. Um, 
And usually by week four, that's when you're starting to advertise. So that $2,000 is enough money to get you across that full month, if that makes sense. Because this whole thing of rapid fire testing and then building the funnels can take three weeks, right? Um, depending on your team and how fast the client is at responding to you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to add John Loomer. Um, and then if I need more as well, I can go in here and go uh, Billy Jean. I don't think he shows up. Social Media Explorer. I don't think that will show up either. Sometimes I bring up an ad account just to see if those things show up. Actually, you can almost do it here. Uh, Social Media Explorer. No, it doesn't show up. Kimra Luna, Buffer, Buffer. Buffer would be a good one to use so we can have a layer buffer. AppSumo, Social Media Examiner. You have to think carefully though about how you're layering things. Um, Power editor is probably good. Yeah, you have to think about how you layer things as well. Because if you look here, I'm, I'm using John Loomer. Okay, yeah, we know that those are Facebook marketers. We probably don't even need to layer John Loomer because we're pretty confident that's mostly going to be Facebook freelancers. Uh, we're using Social Media Examiner. Um, they attract a lot of non-Facebook people, right? They attract a lot of content people or Twitter people or LinkedIn people. And so if uh, I'm telling Facebook you can target social media examiner layered with Buffer, well, that's not necessarily going to be a freelance uh, Facebook marketer. So maybe it's better to layer it with Power Editor, right? So think about how you layer your targeting and your audiences. Anyways, I'm not going to go into this column too much because this is targeting training and that's kind of besides the point. Uh, what I'm trying to get you to think of is use your audience insights and then ideally if you can have two ad sets per persona, you'll have a lot better chances at the ultimately the success rate. This is a pain in the ass. Rapid fire testing is a pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie. It would be so much easier to just create an ad for your client and hit the ground running with it. Um, but if this is a brand new client or they've really struggled or things are not working out, this is going to save you so much time long term because you'll identify very, very quickly, which is why it's called rapid fire testing, uh, what wor will work and what won't. Um, okay. So then we go into our ad account and here is where the magic is going to happen. So um, Rob, with it's really, really interesting uh, question. The question of audience sizes, right? Uh, because there's no like black or white answer to what size audience you should have. Typically, what I would recommend is you kind of want to stick around the 100 to sort of 500K audience size for this type of stuff. However, what I will say is that uh, your lookalike is probably going to be in the millions and some 